Okay, I think that's going. So welcome everybody to uh, Sunday's uh, sessions at Saint, or at uh, DCLA. Um, how many people were here yesterday? Virtually everybody. Cool. Um, so I'm Doug Hoffman. I'm with Sage Tree, a, a, dev, a Drupal shop down in uh, San Diego, and we're going to be doing from blank to live in 45, which is basically um, I'm going to build out a Drupal site in, in hopefully 45 minutes. On the session page, uh, there's download files if you want to get the code base that I'm using. And uh, on that particular page, if I click on it, there's also the little uh, cheat sheet I used that I run through to actually do this, and then the slides that I'll go through, as well as a zip file, and then uh, a link to a reference site. So this is basically the little site we're going to try to build. So a few slides to start with. Um, Sage Tree full, full uh, service uh, web development shop down in San Diego. Uh, the, the site that you probably have heard of um, that we rebuilt was Comic-Con a couple of years ago, and we continue to maintain that firm, so that was a lot of fun. We get free tickets, so that's cool, too. Um, if you live in the L.A. area here, actually, the better choice than Comic-Con is to go to WonderCon, because it's basically the same show, but it's a lot less expensive and a lot less crowded, so uh, that happens in Anaheim every year. Um, what do these three things have in common? Um, skiing a slalom course, I used to do a lot of that. Um, and when you fall at 40 miles an hour on the water, it really hurts. It, it, it isn't, doesn't feel like water at that point. And uh, my brother-in-law and I go mountain bike riding almost every Sunday morning, uh, not today. Um, and I'm a klutz. I go over the handlebars all the time. You can see from my knees there what happens. And, uh, you know, how does that relate to Drupal? Well, I got involved with Drupal about five years ago, and I tried to learn it on my own. And if you come at Drupal and you try to learn it on your own, it's got a really, some people say it's a really steep learning curve. Um, a friend of mine, Susan Russ, says it has a, a long, slow learning curve. Like you wade out into the ocean for you know an hour and you're up to your knees because it's got such depth to it. And if you come at Drupal from the perspective of I'm a PHP programmer, you sort of lose a lot of the power of Drupal and you may go down bad paths with Drupal. So what that has in common with those two other things is I went through uh, you know a banging my head against the wall process of trying to figure out how Drupal worked and it was really hard and I realized you really need to get an understanding of the basics of Drupal, the basic building drops of, drop blocks of Drupal, we call it Drupal out of the box, so that you build within the context of Drupal and you make your life a lot easier than if you try to do things that Drupal just isn't good at. It. There are some websites, if a, a client wants a really custom website with all this really wild stuff, it can be done in Drupal, but sometimes it's better done somewhere else. So we try to keep people in what we call the, the Drupal out of the box mode. So a little glossary here, um, here people say d.o, it's Drupal.org. Um, we'll go through most of this, so I'll just skip through that. You can refer to it later. Um, most people that uh, work in Drupal land uh, have some kind of local development environment. Uh, I uh, favor uh, Acquia's Dev Desktop, so that's a free download. You can get from Acquia's site. Um, a lot of people use WAMP uh, server on Windows, MAMP, and LAMP on the other OSs. Uh, and, and virtual boxes are becoming more and more prevalent. But uh, if you haven't looked into those things, you might want to do that so you can work on your laptop entirely and not have to have a, a server up when you're in development. Um, you'll hear in Drupal land a lot, don't hack core. Um, Drupal is uh, structured in a uh, database to uh, modules to uh, theming layer to presentation so that it's built so that it has this uh, hook system so that you can tie into it at, at virtually any level you want and, and extend it. If you look at the actual files uh, system that comes with a Drupal install, all of your stuff should go in the sites folder. Um, the, uh, it's a misconception often. You see the modules folder, the themes folder, and the main directory and drop things in there. It's the wrong place to put things because when you upgrade Drupal, that'll, that stuff will go away. Um, just a little bit about our process. Uh, we often do site audits if they have an existing site already, uh, look at what they have, decide how they can get from there to where they want to be. Then we almost always do it, well, actually we always do a discovery project. Sometimes we get paid for it, sometimes we don't. And the discovery project is almost always 25% of the project. It's like you spend a lot of time up front figuring it out and then the build will go well. And then we also almost always do a little bit of training almost exactly like this with the clients, with the editors, the people that are going to use Drupal so they understand Drupal before we start doing any design or anything like that. And we're more of a development shop and we start out with a build in Bardic which is the basic theme in Drupal so we get the functionality down first. In parallel we start working on the design but we don't want design that doesn't work in Drupal so we build the functionality first and then we 
uh, build a de uh, design that'll work with it, and then we build it out. So six steps to a live site. We're going to do a little bit of server and architect. We're going to build a uh, basic Drupal site, set up content types and taxonomies, set up user roles and permissions, build a view, and launch the site, um, hopefully in a very short period of time. So discovering architecture, our business case that we're going to work on here is we need a private internal website where scientists from different departments can post, share, find, and comment on research papers. Seems pretty straightforward. Uh, uh, when we start uh, in on that, then we start talking about who are the people that are going to use the site. We're going to have students who are anonymous users, scientists, editors, and web admin, and they can sort of do a variety of things. Students can basically view, scientists can post their own research papers, editors can do anything to research papers, and the web guy can do anything to the website. So we usually spend a lot more time on that, but that's sort of the user case for our site that we're going to build here. Then we usually build out some wireframes. You know, we want a homepage with a slideshow, maybe. We want a library of these research papers with filters so we can find them. We want a detailed page for the research paper. We want to see the scientists on the site, and maybe we get some comps. So you know, that's all that stuff, that 25% of project we just did in one minute. But we want to basically try to build a site like that. So we have a from that, a reasonably good understanding of what it is we're trying to build. So um, the next part of the, re the, the uh, discovery actually is to talk about what kind of content is going to be on the site. So pretty simple in this case. We want to have a research paper content type with a number of fields, such as title, picture, body, author, data publication, categorize it, stuff like that. So we spend time talking about the different kinds of content type on the site and then how we're going to categorize stuff. So in our little simple site, we're going to categorize research papers into sort of you know, areas of uh, study like biomedical, economics, mathematics, etc. So that completes sort of the whole discovery and architecture thing. Um, we're going to use Pantheon today, which is a Drupal-specific hosting uh, uh, platform, which we love. And we're going to install basically a little uh, Drupal site. So I'm going to just switch over to my browser. And this is the reference site, so you know we're trying to build a library page, and I can you know filter by mathematics, things like that, um, and a couple other basic pages. So in Pantheon, I have a system set up here, uh, and in Pantheon, you get a dev test and live environment. You get a Git repo, which is something you want to start looking at if you're going to uh, build sites for source control. You get automated backups, a whole bunch of cool stuff, and you can get a free uh, dev site on Pantheon. Uh, for no cost, so it's a, it's a great thing to do. So I sort of have my site um, loaded in dev, and I'm going to go over here and clone the whole darn site from dev to test so that I can keep my dev site clean. So I basically just copied, that's how easy it was to copy uh, my dev site to my test site in Pantheon, and then I go visit uh, our, the site we just built. Come on, Pantheon. So what I've done already was I downloaded Drupal Core and a bunch of contributed modules, and I loaded those up into Pantheon. And Pantheon's going to come up, I hope. If this doesn't, for some reason, the network isn't going very fast, um, I'll switch over to using uh, Acquia Dev Desktop. But this should come up. Live demos are always dangerous. Let me try it again. It's always fun. I did this last night, ran through the whole thing, no problem. And the network's running fine. Well, rather than wait for that, I'm going to switch over to Acquia's Dev Desktop. So I did the same thing in Acquia. Uh, <laughs> this is Acquia's Dev Desktop tool, which you can download. So I'm basically going to run a whole web server on my local host. Let's go back here. Oh, sorry. Pantheon finally arrived, so we'll stick with that. So basically, uh, I'm going to install Drupal. This is a standard Drupal install. I'm just taking all the defaults. Everybody should do this at least once. Uh, 
I got to give my site a name, so we're going to call it research papers. I need an email address for the admin. I'll use my own. Um, the first user that's created right here, I'm calling it admin, I'm giving it a password, um, is called user1. And in Drupal, that's really important. User1, this one account, has full privileges to everything all the time. You can't turn anything off for this account. So it's an account you want to protect uh, well and have a good password on. If you ever lose the um, password for that, uh, there are ways to get it back. Um, so here's basically a Drupal site out of the box. Not very impressive, um, not much there. So the first thing in Drupal that you would typically do uh, if you don't have a pre-configured one is you would go into the module page. And since I've loaded a whole bunch of other modules that I want to use, Drupal core out of the box actually doesn't have a lot of things in it. Um, I'm going to start turning on some of these modules. So I went to the module page. There's one called module filter, which on the module page when it's done, uh, will give me a little filter here at the top. So you got to remember when you add modules to Drupal or enable modules, things happen elsewhere in Drupal that start giving you new functionality. So this little filter list didn't exist until I enabled that module. So I want to enable some other modules um, on the site. And the reason I use this, yeah, I can quickly find things. I'm going to turn comments off just because my site I don't want comments. We're going to use a couple of uh, modules uh, called Devel and Devel Generate. We'll see these in a minute. Um, we're going to enable the IMCE, which is a, a file upload capability. So out of the box, Drupal requires you to sort of set up um, a whole editing environment. Um, so I'm going to also use the WYSIWYG. I'm going to use libraries, which is a module that lets me connect uh, JavaScript libraries. And I think I already got the WYSIWYG. Yeah. So as we add modules to the site, new things are available for us to do on the site as we did that. So, oh yeah, I also want for stuff we're doing later, views and views UI. So at this point we installed Drupal and we enabled a bunch of modules and now we're going to go set up uh, the WYSI we get it real quick. Um, I'm not going to do everything you would have to do for this, but I'm going to go to the IMCE on the configuration page and basically allow people to use, uh, there's profiles for how people can upload things. Um, you can configure them to all sorts of ways. This is like how big a file they can upload, you know, what file uh, types they can upload, things like that. So I'm just taking the two profiles that come with it out of the box, but you can build your own profiles, profiles to do all sorts of interesting things. And then I'm going to go to the uh, content authoring for WYSIWYG profiles. And I already loaded a, a JavaScript uh, editor called CK Editor, which is the one you should use because that's going to be what's in Drupal 8. And I'm basically the library's module found it. It said you can use that when people edit in these different text formats. And I'm going to save that. And then I would typically go into um, this and configure in those different text formats who's allowed to do what. It's a whole art to doing this stuff. I'm just going to pick a few things here so you get a sense of it. And uh, let's say that we can do um, images. And I'm going to turn on IMC so I can upload files. And I'm going to save that. I'm not going to go into great detail about that. In Drupal 8, this is going to be, it'll come out of the box with a pre-configured WYSIWYG getter, which will be a lot better. And uh, yeah, it's already printed. Most people don't do this every time they build a site. They have a pre-configured site that they start with. But I think it's good to just understand that back end of it. Um, and it is very, it's just like Drupal, it's very powerful. You can control what people are allowed to put in their body text and things like that. And that helps out in terms of theming and things like that. Um, so we've got that configured. And now we're going to basically build out a couple of pages. So I'm going to add some content to the site. So Drupal out of the box it comes with basic pages and articles. So I'm going to use a basic page. It's sort of obvious what that is. I'm going to call it home. Uh, hang on a sec, I need some dummy text. Get some dummy text in there. Um, I can give it a URL. There's another module which most people use called Path Auto, which uses tokens to generate good URLs for SEO. We're going to not do that here. But I just created a home page, and if I click on my home button, I don't go to the home page that I just created, right? That's just because I called the page home doesn't mean it is the home page. So I have to go into Drupal's configuration and tell it um, that instead of the default home page of Drupal, which nobody uses, I want to use that, that page that I just created. 
And now if I click on it, I did go to the new home page that I just created. Um, so that's sort of how to build an uh, easy page in there. I could build another one in there, uh, but I'll skip that. The next thing I want to do is we talked about having student scientists and uh, editors on the site. So I need to set up those roles. Those are called roles in Drupal. And if I just go over to the roles side, um, a role starts out as nothing more than a name. So I just type in a name. I got that. Oops. Edit. So we'll add students, scientists, and editors as roles. If I go look at the permissions table in Drupal, which is over here, there's a whole set of permissions. Now I have these new roles out of the box. Drupal has anonymous authenticated administrator. I added three roles of my own. This is sort of the power of Drupal. You can extend it easily and often right through the interface here. You don't actually have to write code to do it. And then you have to decide, this is a whole long discussion with the client, who is allowed to do what. And we're going to come back to that in a minute. But at this point, I at least set up the roles. They're sitting there waiting to be used. Um, and Drupal out of the box also comes with a set of menus. So by default, it has these menus. You can create your own menus. You can do all sorts of interesting things with the menu. The main menu is typically considered the one people see at the top of the, the, uh, the uh, right under the header. So if I list the links to the main menu right now, I just have the home page in there. If I added another page, I uh, won't just do that. Let's add another page, another basic page. Call it about. I'll say I want to put it in the menu system in the main menu. We'll call it about. Save that guy. Now I have two tabs, um, but they're not in the order I like. So if I go back to the menus and go to the list links, anytime I see these crosshairs, I can just drag and drop to change the order. So I just change the order of the two tabs in the main menu. So now in the front, I get home on the left. Um, so. The other concept Drupal has, uh, I'm going to run through a couple slides here, is uh, a page is made up of regions. So you know, if you look at any page, typically you're going to sort of visually understand there's typically a header, a footer, a sidebar, maybe two sidebars left and right, two, two on the left or whatever, and a content area. So in Drupal, in those regions, which a theme understands, uh, there are things you can put in those regions. So in the everything other than the content, you can basically put blocks. So a user login a block is something you put in the sidebar. A recent poll is something you put in the sidebar. Um, the menu system is uh, another block that goes typically up in the header. And then you have the content area where the actual content of that particular page is going to be displayed. So in Drupal, this is concepts of pages, regions within pages, blocks that can be placed within those regions, and then the actual content for that particular page. So if I go into back to our little Drupal site and I go to structure blocks, this is all the blocks that I have at the moment. And for instance, in the sidebar, I got a bunch of these. So I'm going to turn these off. So I can just turn them off at will. And much as I love Drupal, most people don't want you know powered by Drupal down at the bottom of their website. So I'm going to turn that off. And now those blocks won't appear anymore. I can add a new block. In this case, I'm going to add a nice little block that's just um, a static text block that we want to put uh, some contact information down at the bottom of the page. And on blocks, you have all sorts of things you can do to place them on various different pages. This page, not that page. There's another module called context, which if you can do anything complex with block placement, context is a module to look at. So now that I save that block, uh, and let's we need to put it somewhere. So where did it go? There it is. Footer. We'll put this down in the footer. Save that. And now you can see that I don't have those three, the login screens and stuff that's there. And there's that uh, footer I created. And if I click on the little gar gear there, I could go edit it. So you can see I'm starting to build up a couple pages on the site and things are there. Um, so the next big thing we're going to do is we're going to build out a taxonomy. So we decided we're going to have a content type for research papers and we want to categorize them. So in Drupal, that's a taxonomy. It's a way to categorize stuff. Categories can be used for lots of interesting things. You can use them just as we will here as a filter on a view so that I can show just the kinds of research papers I want to see. You can use them to relate content to another content. So if you want to have a piece of content and show in the sidebar, say, news stories and then press releases that are related to each other, you can do that with taxonomy. And also, if you look into a thing called Solar Search, uh, 
you can use taxonomies as facets so that you can show a page on the left sidebar. There'd be all these little categories with a number of items in each, and you can click on them, and the results will, will uh, narrow down as you use them. So all sorts of things use taxonomies. So a taxonomy like a role starts at, as just a name. So we're going to add a new one. We're going to call it um, paper category. And then we're going to go to that paper category here and add some terms to it. So this would be like uh, you know, mathematics, physics, chemistry, whatever it is I'd want to do. And you can always go back and add things to this later. Taxonomies can be hierarchical as well. You can have more than one taxonomy. It's, it's really up to you. So if I go look, now I have a taxonomy with several terms in it. So it's really important to, to think about the content in your site and how you want to categorize it and use taxonomies to do that. Um, really, really important. A lot of people miss out on taxonomies early on. So now we have a taxonomy, but we want to apply it to something, right? So out of the box, Drupal has, if I go to structure content types, has article and basic page, right? So um, that's not going to work for us. So I want to add a new content type. And again, this is a power of Drupal. You get to add new content types of your own. So I'm going to call the new content type research paper. And then everything in Drupal is fieldable, which is really cool. What a lot of people do with websites, we're, we're in a rescue process right now. They just you know big one big body field, and they put everything in there, and they got pictures, and they got all sorts of stuff, right? But the problem with that is it's not fielded. So if somebody goes, well, I want to show a page that just shows the second picture you know, in the body text over here, can't be done, or it would be really hard to do. So the idea in Drupal is you want to not use as few big body blob fields, as I call them, and field things out as much as possible so that you can reuse them in inter interesting ways. So for our little site here, we're going to add a, uh, just for demo, we're going to add a graphic field so we can put a picture in here, that'd be an image. So I'm going to add that field to my content type. In general, I'm going to take all the defaults and make these fields required. There's all sorts of other settings I could apply. And I also want to categorize it, right? So uh, we'll add a new field called category. I don't know why they don't call this taxonomy down here, but it's called term reference here. And then I'm going to say use a uh, select list um, when they, they uh, create that. And it's, uh, I want to make sure I select the taxonomy that I just created, that one called uh, paper category. And so there it is. We'll make that a required field and save it. So now what we've basically done is built a uh, new content type. Uh, I won't go into detail, but there's a manage display thing over here that lets us sort of control some of the display. There's a really cool module called Display Suite, which by default, Drupal out of the box pretty much lays things out on a page top to bottom. Display Suite gives you some like uh, two column stack and all sorts of things. So it's another module to take a look at. But if I went over here and added some content now, now I can add a research paper as well as uh, an article and a basic page. So I've added new features to Drupal. And remember we built those uh, permissions, or the uh, roles before, but we didn't set any permissions. So now is probably a good time to go down here, and at least in the node section, we now have a section with the research paper stuff. And nobody can do anything with research papers at the moment, so let's change that. Let's let administrators do anything with them. Students can view them, which they get by default. Scientists can create their own, edit their own, and delete their own, but not others. And editors can do anything to research papers. So there's a whole you know, conversation you have to have about who's allowed to do what so you can configure all these permissions. But Drupal's permission system is, uh, is great. So rather than go manually create some uh, research papers, I'm going to use a cool little module that we enabled at the beginning called Devel. And uh, I'm going to generate, actually. First, I'm going to create some users. So uh, I want to I have users in the system and content in the system so when we build some of these pages, there's stuff to show people. So rather than do it manually, develop, generate, and uh, users and content as well. So we'll make 50 uh, students real quick. We'll make 50 scientists real quick. And we'll make 50 editors real quick. The place you go to manage people is on the people page, and now you can see I have all sorts of, you know, dummy usernames and things like that in the system. So I have a lot of users that I can now play with. And I also want some content. So I'm going to go to configuration again and do generate content instead of users. And all I really care about is building out some research papers. So let's build out, say, I don't know, 100 research papers. And it's going to do some random stuff, throw images in them and whatnot. But the, in the, during the development phase, this is really useful. 
um, to build out content. So now if I go to the content page, which is where you look at content, um, I can see that I have all these research papers and if I probably look at the last page, there's my little two first uh, basic pages we built. So now I have a lot of content that I can work with and now uh, we're going to jump into views. So views in, uh, if you build a, web, a Drupal website without views, you're really missing the, the point. And in Drupal 8, views is, in, you know, is now part of core. So it, it, it's really a really, really important part of Drupal. So just to bang home that basic site, we have done all this stuff. Views are lists of content. So anytime it's a list of content, it's what? This is, this is the feedback I need. When, anytime there's a list of content, it's a view. Thank you. So tables, grids, teasers, slideshow stuff. In this little uh, other demo we do on the home page is a slideshow. Slideshows, you know, little scrolls across with the picture there, right? So that's a list of stuff, so it's a view. The sidebar on the home page, which is a list of the three upcoming tours, it's a list of the three upcoming tours. Anytime I say list, it's a view. Um, home page slideshow, upcoming tours. There's going to be on this particular demo site, you know, a tours page showing the tours we're doing. It's in a table display, but that's a view. Um, maps, interesting enough, are also a view. They're just lists of points on a map. So you, with a couple of extra modules and pretty easy to do, um, you can create maps like this that, that uh, you know, geographically show stuff. Um, if you want to show a list of the guides on this adventure travel site, it's, you know, a three up list of pictures of the guides, but it's just a view. So the key point is that views is integral to pretty much any Drupal site. And basically, you know, if you think about it, a website is not much more than pages with lists of stuff and the details uh, there under. Um, so if you can build a view, you're going to be in pretty good shape. So let's go build a view for our research papers for our research site here. So I'm going to structure, since I enabled views, I now have under this guy uh, views. And let's add a new view. We'll call it the library. And what do we want to show? We want to show content of type research paper, the content type we created. And I'm going to make it unsorted just because I want to do my own sort. And it's going to be unformatted to you. So by default, there's all sorts of display formats. There's a module called View Slideshow. So if you add that, that'd be a new format you could select here, things like that. Um, we're going to put it in the menu. So here I can sort of do that. This is all set up for the view. And then if I continue and edit, this is the guts of uh, Drupal's uh, Views configuration page. I'm going to do just some pretty simple stuff. But you can see here, um, it's paging every 10. It's going to build a bunch of stuff for me. Um, it's filtered right now by published uh, contents, only published contents of type research paper from that setup stuff. But let's um, add a filter for that taxonomy. So kind uh, of has taxonomy term. So I'm going to in this screen, I'm basically going to say use the paper category as a filter and expose it to end users. So down here I get a little preview of the view as it's being built up. So it's starting to look like that. There's an exposed filter there. Um, and we want to sort it in some fashion. So I'm going to sort it just by title. Content title. And so now you can see the A's are at the beginning. And in, in views in Drupal 7, you always got to click the save button or you sort of lose it. So I'm going to click that save button and go to the home page. And now I have a library page with that kind of stuff. Oh, I didn't create, made it as a select list. So I made it as an autocomplete. But so now uh, there's no uh, there's no library uh, research papers with the math, tags as mathematics. Oh, did I? Oh, yeah, I did. Spell, huh? I'm going to leave that alone. Um, but you get the idea there that um, it's views that you use to create lists of stuff and then you can uh, apply filters and other interesting things on them. And it's not that hard to do. The only last thing I'd probably do is on my little site here, go back to the menus and put library second. And now the little tab for libraries is here. So that's a view. So, you know, we've gone pretty quick, but we've, we basically installed Drupal set up the WYSIWYG editor, built out a taxonomy to categorize information, created a content type with some fields in it, um, built a couple pages, and built a view to basically show that kind of stuff um, in it. So the last thing I'm going to do here is go to appearance. And in Drupal, there's, a, there's free themes, uh, there's 
build your own themes, there's starter themes. Um, I'm just going to use a quick free one. Uh, I, I, we don't have those, sorry. We're, so we're going to go to Appearance, which is where you manage themes in Drupal, and we're going to pick a different one called Zircon. So I'm just going to enable and set that as the default. And now my, my site looks differently. I also lost my menu bar. Anybody have any idea why I might have lost that? Um, remember when we did the structure blocks um, in, a, in a theme, you have various different regions. So these are the ones in that. This particular theme has a different set of regions than the theme we were using, which was Quartic out of the box. So my main menu got lost because it didn't have the same place to go anymore. So I'm going to switch, find it, and put it back in, in this theme what, where it should go, which is the menu bar. And now it'll uh, show up in the right place, uh, right there. Um, so actually, in about 30 minutes, we built out most of this site. Um, Why is it allowed? What's that? Uh, because because Devel Generate is using Libsyform just to generate text. So that's just a common thing. Um, so yeah, it's all dummy text. At this point, I definitely need to clean out all the, the old co the test content, um, you know, create user ideas for the new users and things like that. Um, I think on this uh, reference site, we also have a, a scientist um, page, so I could quickly do that if I go over here. So if I want to create this page on uh, our little site, what do I need to create? A view, a view right, yeah. So if I go over to here and go structure views, get a new view. I can't type today. Call it scientist. What do I want to show in this view? I'll give you, I'll let you look at the list. So it's going to be, a, we want to create a list of scientists, right? So scientists, are they content or are they something else? Users, right? So I'm going to select over here. I want to show users, and I'm not going to sort it. Um, again, I want to put it in the menu system, so I want to put it in the main menu. Um, and it's going to, those are the defaults. So now I'm going to, I got a list of users here. Not exactly what I want, so um, I'm going to search that users have a headshot, so I'm going to put that in there. Um, probably don't need a label to tell me it's a picture. And Drupal also has this concept, which I'll talk on for a second here, called uh, image styles. And it's really powerful. In a lot of sites where you, old days where you built them with Dream or whatever, you would have to create the images for all the different sizes you were going to use throughout your site. And, and in Drupal, instead what you do is you allow people to upload a reasonably high quality version of the picture and then you use image styles to change the size and the scale and the crop and all sorts of things of the image as you need it. So for instance, um, on this little grid page, I want to use probably a, a, a medium-sized picture. You can create all your, your own image styles. If you wanted to create a table, you, maybe you needed a thumbnail. The idea to remember is that you can use Drupal to do all that scaling and cropping automatically so things always fit where they should fit rather than waiting for people to do it with Photoshop. Was there a question? Yeah, yeah. I was just going to ask. Uh, so would that be a function of the uh, template that you would use in? Like, for instance, no, they're, they're actually, well, it'd be, it'd be, you know, you'd have to relate it to the design and the style and, you know, the grid system and whatnot you're using in. But, you know, a typical example would be um, when I go to the detail page for research papers, there's a hero image. I probably want it to go all the way across the screen and be a certain size. Responsiveness is a whole different thing, but, you know, I want it to fit in that size. And then if I was going to show in the library page, maybe I just want a small thumbnail to show to the left of the title of the thing. So I would set up all these different styles in Drupal so I don't have to do any cropping when people create new content. It happens for them. But you can create your own image style. So you get to decide based on the theme you're using or the design you're doing, what are the different sizes you need for things. Yeah. So Drupal can control that. So let me just uh, stick this guy in here. So now we got pictures of scientists. I probably want to filter not just by active, but um, by roles. So I'll do this in the view. Um, only scientists. And then I'd probably sort it in some fashion by uh, uh, by name. And 
And oh, I did it as an unparameter list. So let's switch to a grid view for across. And so what's the problem I just created for myself there by doing that? I got these holes down here. So in the view, it's paging every 10. So I want to do it, something that works with 12 or with 4. So I'll apply that. And now, if we go to our home page, we now have a scientist page. Uh, I definitely screwed something up there. But a uh, scientist page with them showing. If I click on it, it'll take them to their profile page in Drupal. So I can let people come to the site, look at people's research papers, and then jump over and see their bio and things like that on the site. And again, I just did that by building a view and using the content that we generated with Devel Generate uh, users for that kind of stuff. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's the you know the quick version of Doug's all Doug Van's all day uh, session yesterday to build a site. The keys really are deciding upfront what kind of site you're kind of going to build. So that whole discovery process, which really is outside of Drupal, and then deciding what Drupal modules will get you. Most are all the way there to build what you need to build. Pulling those modules together into a site, installing Drupal, configuring WYSIWYG editor if you haven't already done that. And then building out the taxonomies that you use to categorize information. Building out the content types and their fields that you're going to put information in. And then building out the views that are going to be associated with that. So on our reference site, you know, another view we might build is on the home page here. You know, there's the three latest research papers. So that would just be another view that's going to show research papers, but we build it instead of as a page, which both views we built right now were page views. We could build it as a block, and then we could place it over here uh, in the sidebar on all pages so that the latest three research papers would show up from there. Um, and then there's all sorts of places you could go from that, but, but that's the basics of building a Drupal site. Drupal itself. Add modules, install it, configure with your editor, build the taxonomies, the content types, and the views, and then set up the menu system for it. And then you're pretty much there. Um, and I think, and then we would launch the site. So this actually is live on the, the web at the moment because we're on Pantheon. Um, there's all sorts of other things you'd set up. You know, after you launch it, you want to worry about backups. Do you have that set up? If you're if you're not on, Pantheon has an automated backup system, so that's really cool. If you're not on Pantheon, there's a module called Backup and Migrate, which sets up schedules to back up the database. Um, so that's important. You want to look at SEO modules, so you can do sort of all sorts of SEO work and spam filters. Honeypot is one we use all the time. There's a bunch like that. Um, so that, we actually did it right in about 45 minutes. We built a little site. Um, resources that I like, uh, if you like online video stuff and you're willing to pay about 30 bucks a month, drupalize.me and buildamodule.com are great resources. These are some of the books I use, um, and there's all sorts of free stuff out there. And with that, I'll open it up to any questions you might have. Yeah? So the first thing you want to do whenever you say something like that, like I want to integrate with Facebook, you ask is there already a module for that? And there are modules for integration with Facebook, so I'd look at those first to see if they provide the functionality you want so you don't have to write that code. But Drupal's, you know, you could write your own uh, module for Facebook using Drupal's hook system. So the key is that if you want to get into module development, I'm not an uh, uh, expert on that, but I can uh, show you real quick, uh, let me see here, what it would look like. Uh, let's see. So in the folder system for Drupal, there's modules, and the convention is to have the contributed ones from Drupal.org in one folder called Contrib and custom ones you create here. So this is a little demo block module. If you look at what you do in Drupal is uh, you basically define a module to Drupal with a little info file. There's a little structure to how this happens. You know, it's going to work with Drupal 7, it's the name of the module, etc. And then you actually write the module code. And you hook in, there's a series of hooks that you hook into. So Drupal has this hook system that you can build things. This is 35 lines of code that basically uh, builds a, a block for us, which would be pretty easy to do on its own. But if I go uh, over here to modules, see what that was called, demo block. There's the little demo block modules. That's the custom module I wrote. So if I turn it on, now there's some code running in Drupal that's hooked, you know, hooked into Drupal and said, I want to create a new block and I want to you know, have it in your system. So now if I go to structure blocks, 
there's my little sample block module. I can place it in the where's the sidebar? There it is, the sidebar. And there's my little module. So you would, you know, that's a very simple example of writing a module in Drupal. But the key, the first thing to always ask isn't, can I write a module? Is did somebody else already write it? Because in all probability they have. You know, there's Drupal modules for Facebook integration, YouTube, Vimeo, Salesforce.com, Constant Contact, Mailchimp, all those kinds of things. So don't first ask, you know, is it possible for me to write my own code? Not that it's bad to do that. But there's almost always a starting point, a module somewhere out there. Um, sometimes they're hard to find, um, but you should look first at that. Um, you know, at Sage, Rich Yemmel is the founder. He's a heavy-duty PHP programmer. We've been doing Drupal since 2005. And he's now come around to the idea that, oh, God, I don't have to write all that code again. I'll just use somebody else's stuff. And then I do the really hard stuff, like maybe the last 10% has to be custom code. Um, so always ask yourself, is there a module that already does that? Um, good question. Any other question? Yep. Okay, thank you guys for coming. Have a great uh, camp, and I'll be around all day if you want to chat. And if anybody wants to uh, uh, get a, a sandbox, actually try this on your own, feel free to come on up, and uh, I have a bunch of them on Pantheon that I could uh, lend out for a while. Are you seeing Pantheon lunch and the URL? Yeah, well, in developments, you know, in sandboxes, no, but you can then tie it to your domain, and it would be, you know, you, you, when you want to tie it to your domain, that's when you have to start paying that money. No, their pricing actually is interesting. It's uh, the lower end is twenty five dollars a month, so it's not the five dollar GoDaddy ones. And then it's a hundred dollars a month, and then it's you know goes up to like four hundred dollars a month. Um, so for the hosting, for those are enterprise kind of levels, um, you know. But the smallest basic site they have is twenty five dollars a month. So a lot of people use it just as a development environment, and then they move the site elsewhere because you can export a site out of Pantheon really easily. Is that just a backup or restore? Um, well, it's it's a let me yeah uh, just actually. Yeah, hang on, just let me. I gotta make sure.